Patrick Pierce, A Manifesto, Audio Description Introduction Filmed in and around the GPO, the poet walks around on a bright day. Grainy black and white photographs of Pierce in uniform, as well as his famous picture in profile, are dotted throughout. Porig MacPierce, or Patrick Pierce, was one of the most committed organisers of Ireland's cultural revival in the early 20th century. Pierce also devoted himself to poetry and drama, writing poems and plays to contemporary critical acclaim in both Irish and English. Considering that Pierce is perhaps the most well known leader of the Easter Rising, it is surprising that as late as 1912 he was speaking on platforms in support of the constitutional nationalist movement. But the following year, Pierce was recruited to the Irish Republican Brotherhood. A founder member of the Volunteers, Pierce became director of military operations. He was effectively the spokesperson of the rebellion, not least because of his major role in composing the proclamation, which he read outside the GPO on Easter Monday. Pierce was executed at Kilmainham Jail on 3rd of May 1916. Pulitzer Prize winning Paul Muldoon is one of Ireland's leading contemporary poets. Muldoon's work is full of paradox, playful but serious, elusive but direct, innovative but traditional. He has taught at Princeton University since 1987 and currently occupies the Howard G. B. Clark 21 chair in the humanities. The poet walks beneath the columns of the GPO. An old fashioned typewriter sits on a table. The title appears as though typed. Patrick Pierce, a manifesto. It's good to see a number of St. Enda's boys willing to volunteer, displaying something like defiance, when we've too often been content to deploy ourselves in Turkey to philander as sappers and sepoys on the battlefields of France. His ankle shattered, Connolly has commandeered two girls from Cumann the Mon to dance attendance on him. No less ungainly, I look askance at a young man whose mouth is smeared with fresh strawberries. His lifeblood itself sapped while British soldiers jeered. Another's arm is as obstreperous, having just veered off the stretcher to which he strapped as if to mock the verities. One by one, they've heard their names called and snapped to attention. Ferdia after Ferdia, falling wrapped before Cuchulain at a ford. The frame of a butcher's bicycle is listing so badly one of its legs is surely as game as Connolly's. It's all but Pascal, this orange-black flame that hastens still through the GPO. Even if the British artillery have been inclined to greet my earlier manifestos with a salvo of their own, the Orachli is determined to show that if we don't share the sweet taste of victory, at least for now, we may find joy in our retreat to the Williams and Woods Jam Factory in Parnell Street. The poet retreats, the camera lingering on the statue of Hibernia that crowns the GPO and the tricolour. 